There are a lot of viruses out there that can infect humans. But two things that can get really alarming is when a virus spreads quickly and when it causes serious harm. Zika virus has the potential to do both of these things, which is why it's gotten a lot of attention. Given this, it makes sense to understand a bit about Zika virus and the disease it causes. Zika virus is an arbovirus, meaning it's transmitted via certain arthropods, specifically mosquitoes, so it's a mosquito-borne virus. Mosquito-borne doesn't mean that the virus is born in the mosquito, though, but it's born with an E, which means carried or transported. Sometimes we call organisms like this vectors, where all they do is transport the virus. So with the Zika virus, just like other mosquito-borne viruses like dengue fever, yellow fever, Japanese encephalitis, and West Nile virus, the mosquito acts as a vector that transmits the virus from one person to the next. These viruses are all in the genus Flavivirus. In order to mature her offspring, female mosquitoes need a blood meal, which they get from unsuspecting hosts. Mosquitoes find their blood meals using chemical compounds that we and other organisms give off, like carbon dioxide, ammonia, lactic acid, and octanol. So when a mosquito that also happens to be carrying the virus finds her meal and digs in, the virus infects the human host and starts to multiply or reproduce within the human. With most flaviviruses though, the virus isn't able to replicate enough in the human host to actually be able to reinfect another mosquito. And so the human is considered a dead-end host. However, the Zika virus, along with yellow and dengue fever, is well enough adapted to human hosts such that it can multiply to a point where it can reinfect another unsuspecting mosquito, which can then go on to infect more people. This window lasts for the first week of infection, during which the Zika virus can be found in the blood. So if humans with the disease can transmit back to mosquitoes, then you can imagine that areas where there are a lot of mosquitoes would be set up for spreading the virus super quickly, right? Now the Zika virus is transmitted via mosquitoes in the Aedes genus. These bloodthirsty little guys can bite at night, but are mostly active during the daytime. Aedes mosquitoes are also the same ones that transmit chikungunya fever and dengue fever. When Aedes aegypti, or Aedes albopictus, both species of the Aedes mosquito, lands on your skin and sticks in its long nose, or proboscis, it pierces the epidermis, which is the topmost layer, composed almost entirely of keratinocytes. Keratinocytes basically serve to protect against foreign pathogens, and it's typically pretty good at that. That proboscis, though, keeps going into the dermis, since the epidermis just gets oxygen from the air and doesn't have its own blood supply, whereas the dermis does. And this is what our mosquito's after, right? The blood meal. Since the proboscis goes through both the epidermal and the dermal layers, the cells in those layers are susceptible to infection by the Zika virus. So in addition to keratinocytes, fibroblasts and dendritic cells have also been found to be permissive to Zika virus, meaning they have some sort of receptor or attachment site that basically says, here you go man, come on in. Now we still don't know everything about the Zika virus infection, but we do know that when it enters the cell, it injects a single-stranded positive RNA strand. Positive means that this piece of RNA is a lot like our own mRNA. It's basically ready to rock and get translated into proteins. The virus's genome is translated by our own cellular machinery into more viruses. Eventually, those cells-turned-virus-making factories die, which actually ends up releasing more viruses to infect more cells. As bleak as all that sounds, our immune system's actually pretty good at fighting off Zika virus, and only one in five get sick from infection and often the others won't even notice that they've been infected. Common symptoms when patients have them are mild fever and skin rash, but some also experience muscle and joint pain, headaches, and conjunctivitis, or red eyes. The incubation period, or time from infection to symptoms, isn't known, but it's thought to be from a few days to a week. Treatment usually just involves treating the symptoms, things like getting plenty of rest, drinking fluids to prevent dehydration, and taking medicine like acetaminophen to help reduce pain and fever. Okay, so we've hit the spreads quickly part, which really matters most in places with a lot of mosquitoes. But what about the causes serious harm part? Well, although it causes mild symptoms in adults, there's more to the story. In October 2015, in areas of Brazil where Zika virus has been circulated quite a bit, public health officials noticed a significant increase in babies born with microcephaly, which is when a child is born with an abnormally small head and therefore abnormally small brain size. 
and this has the tendency to cause serious neurological and intellectual deficits, seizures, as well as vision or hearing problems. It was noticed that there was this huge increase in babies with microcephaly, up to a 20-fold increase, among Brazilian states with Zika virus outbreak. As of November 2015, the European Center for Disease Control has stated that it's plausible that the Zika virus is able to cause microcephaly in the developing fetus or newborn, as the Zika virus can be transmitted from mother to baby during pregnancy or around the time of birth. Although it's not really known yet how often this happens or how exactly the Zika virus is linked to microcephaly. In addition to being spread mostly by mosquito bites, and in some cases from mother to child, Zika virus has also been reported to spread through both blood transfusions and sexual contact. Currently, there's no vaccine for the Zika virus, so it's highly advised to take precautions against traveling to areas of outbreak, mostly limiting mosquito bites. So doing things like wearing bug spray all day or wearing long sleeve shirts and pants, especially during the day when the 80s mosquitoes are most active. If infected, it's especially important to avoid mosquitoes to avoid spreading Zika virus to others especially in that first week of symptoms. The World Health Organization currently suggests pregnant women consult their doctor or travel clinic for guidance and recommendations.